Hi, I'm Tom Madden. I'm the team lead for BLAST at the NCBI, part of the National Library of Medicine at the NIH. Today, I'm going to tell you about Elastic Blast. It lets you run your BLAST searches with minimal effort on the cloud. This is a video for my poster, and I will cover some examples on the poster that I could not cover in my five-minute talk. There's a video for my five-minute talk that includes the Jupyter Notebook example. So we'll look at that after this video. First, what is BLAST? Briefly, BLAST compares DNA or protein sequences to a database of DNA or protein sequences. We have a web page, a command line suite of tools we call BLAST Plus, and some cloud products. Elastic BLAST is built on top of the BLAST Plus command line suite. So Elastic Blast starts cloud instances or machines, populates them with the database and software, and queues searches to them. The searches run there and not on your local machine. It manages the resources so the instances are shut down when your searches are done. Your results are saved in cloud buckets, which is just an area in the cloud you can store files in. For Elastic Blast, we've used services like Kubernetes or AWS Batch that are maintained by the cloud provider. There are a lot of reasons to use Elastic Blast, but I want to emphasize that Elastic Blast makes it relatively simple to run your Blast searches on the cloud and do it efficiently. This table is from the poster and has several Elastic Blast searches. This allows you to get a feeling for how long it takes to do different searches and how much they cost. Runs are done at GCP or Google Cloud Platform and AWS or Amazon Web Services. I'd like to go through a few of the columns to explain them. So this one here is the query size in letters. And as you can see here, the top row is 3.4 billion bases. Over here is the number of CPUs used. And this says 3,200. This is actually 100 instances running each with 32 CPUs. Right here is the runtime. For this top um, row, it's two hours, a little bit more than two hours. Over here are the costs. So on the second to the last column is the cost to run um, on-demand instances, which means you pay full price. Um, and over here are the, um, the costs for a preemptible instance at GCP or spot instances at AWS. Preemptable instances at GCP are 20% of the on-demand cost, and spot instances um, vary about 30 to 35%. So that can actually save you a fair amount of money if, if those are available. So now I'd like to go through a few of the rows. Um, and the others um, that I don't get to, you can just look at on your own. The first row is a search of 3.4 billion bases against protein domains. It used um, 100 instances, each with 32 CPUs, and took a little more than two hours. It would have taken four days on a single machine it's a big search and cost a few hundred dollars, but preemptible instances would have made it more affordable. The fourth row is a search of RefSeq Select limited by organism. Elastic Blast supports limiting by organism, and all you need to do is specify a tax ID, which is just an integer pointing to a node in the taxonomic tree, and that node can vary um, throughout the tree anywhere from like bacteria, um, you know, at the kingdom level down to the species level, say Homo sapiens. And the last row is a BLAST P search, meaning protein protein, of NR with a moderately sized set of proteins, and that's 57,000 residues there, right? Um, the total cost is only a few dollars, and it took about 48 minutes to run. So take a look at the rest of the columns and the um, the rest of the cells here. Okay, this is just a few links to documentation, other information about Elastic Blast. Um, the first is, like I said, our documentation. The second is a GitHub page with the source code for Elastic Blast. And the third one is a GitHub page with a few demo scripts for Elastic Blast. So go check them out if you want. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the folks involved with this project as well as the support we had from the NCBI and NLM in the NIH Strides program.